Hey, this is Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com. In yesterday's video, I created some content around how we could actually create a client portal with SmartSuite. And one of the things that I glossed over a little bit was how we could actually have our end clients be able to create a task or ask us some information and for that to flow inside of SmartSuite. And a couple of you actually raised that question afterwards in some of the comments. And so I'm happy to dig into this because I've set this up in a way that works. Now, if we take a look at the client portal that we built, I made a couple of tweaks here, but the idea is that I'm logged in as a client who has that guest access. And because they have guest access, they can only see these records that are assigned to them. They can't actually edit records. They can't create new records. And this is a little bit of a workaround to still let them be able to interact and participate with us. So in my case, my clients might have a new task, something they want me to work on, which is why we have a form where they're going to submit this task. And then we want it to show up down here in the project tasks. Now, I might want to augment this information. So for example, it's fine that a client might ask a task of me, but I'm not going to have them put in the due date. Maybe they could let me know in the notes when they would like this done by. But because I'm balancing all of the different tasks I have across all of my different clients, I don't want to commit to that due date just because it's been submitted in the form submission. So if we take a look, I added a couple of fields to this. One is an email address. And the reason we're doing this is because somehow we have to identify which project it is that we're talking about. And we'll dig into this a little bit more on the back end. But I thought before we get into the automation itself, it would be helpful to actually check it out from the client's perspective. So if I'm the client, I'm now logged in and I'm gonna say, yes, I need this task completed. I've got my form here. So I'm gonna enter an email address. So I've entered my email address and now I'm gonna give a task name and we'll just call this new task and we'll put in a phase and the phase we can say this is part of our launch and I might have some information in here in my description and notes. Uh, we could add a file upload if we wanted to, but we're keeping this really simple for now. I'll say this is really important and I'm going to press submit. And now this is happening so that in the back end, we've got a couple of automations running and we'll show you what those look like in a moment. But right now I've got my four tasks. Oh, and you can see it just tweaked on the screen. So the really cool part is I'm not actually forcing a refresh of my dashboard. This is happening in that near real time. So it might take a minute or two for your automations to run, but then that new task that I have is created down here with the parameters that I specified. And this is the cool part because I didn't tell it to add uh, Greg Guest as the client or to assign it to myself. And we'll talk more about that in a moment, but you can see that even updates the charts and things like that. So I really think this is a great user experience, especially if you have a relatively simplistic portal use case. Okay, I'm gonna switch over my users so that I'm logged in as myself as the admin and we can talk about the automations that we need to set this up. Okay, we're back here and I'm now logged in as the admin user. Now, if you remember from yesterday's video, I actually have a solution for the client portal and I have a solution for more my backend project management. So that's where I'm creating the automations for this. If I head into my automations, this is actually gonna take two separate automations to conduct this. And remember, of course, you can tweak this as you see fit but I'm going to give you an idea of what we need to do for this, which is create task from client request. And I'm basing this off of a form submission. It's that tasks request form. So if I go back here for a second and I'm on my tasks, again, we talked about this in the other video, but we created this form and this is what we just filled out as the client user who has the embedded form of this inside of their dashboard. That's what we're triggering it on is that task request form. And the first thing I want to do is to be able to find the appropriate project record because we want to link the task to the project for that client, which takes a little bit of trickery here. So what I'm doing is I'm saying where this guest email contains the email address from the form submission itself. And this is searching for that for the projects. So just to give you some context, what I'm doing here is on the projects, I'm assigning that project to the guest user, which is this Greg guest in this case. So I wanna make sure that I have this assignment done both at the project level and as well at the task level. 
so that we can use that email address to then associate the two together. We have to have some kind of unique identifier. Now, you don't have to use email address. You could do something like each project has a unique ID. And for them to create a task, they need to key in one, two, three, four, five, the ID of that project. So if you're like, eh, I don't love the idea of using email addresses, anything that you can use as a unique key or a unique identifier can let you do this step of the process. And now back here in that automation, that guest email is coming from the fact that I have that guest or essentially the assignee field. And I've got guest, but it also has guest email and guest phone. So it's really pulling from that guest record. So I'm saying where that guest email contains, then the email address and that email address, that email is coming from the trigger, which is that form submission. So this has all of the fields from that, and I'm pulling that email to check and see if it matches. If it matches, that's going to find the appropriate project record for that individual. Now I need to have an action step to update my project. And this is where I'm saying, okay, we're going to update the project that we just found. So that's the previous step. And what we're going to do is we're going to link the task from the submission to the project tasks. Now, if you remember from some of the other videos we've created in the past, we don't want to override the values. So if we already had three tasks for this project and we just put in this new task, it's going to clear out those relationships, which is not what we want. We want to be able to say, add a new task to those project tasks, as opposed to get rid of all the old project tasks and just have this new one. So because of that little nuance to it, that's why we're using the project tasks. And then we also have the new task record that was just created. Uh, and again, if you want to dive into that a little bit more, uh, check out some of our other videos that we have on automations and linking these things together for a little bit more detail there. And then the last thing that we want to do in this step is we want to update the task record. And here's kind of the, the trick with this. This one's pretty obvious. We're saying what the status is and the status is planned by default. Okay, that's fine. But notice here that we're setting the client itself. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And I want to kind of explain my rationale here, which is to say, we can't just look up an email address arbitrarily uh, to be able to insert and say, this is our assigned user. Let me go back to that step for a second. If you were to click in and choose the values here, you don't get that many options in terms of how you're going to associate this to a person. It's really got to come from another assigned to field or the owner of something. We can't just type in an email address and have that populate. And we want to be able to do this dynamically. So this is a little bit of a workaround. And I hope this makes sense the way I'm explaining it. But it's basically to say, if I'm back here on my task record, and let me get back to my grid view here. Okay, so let's take a look here. We've got on our task, we've got this project client. And what I did is I created a lookup value where we're taking a look at the associated project, this Elon project product line launch. And we have that guest value here. And we're essentially copying that down or we're looking up. We're not actually copying the data. And we're going to use that then to make this the client guest access here. So the way of thinking about this, if I'm to step back for a second and explain it is, at the project level, we know that we've assigned this to Greg Guest. Therefore, if a task is created for that project, we also want the task assigned to Greg Guest as well. That's the logic we're trying to build here. And so in this case, we need to have this lookup here so that we can say, ah, here's where, who we're going to map it across to. And that's the purpose of that automation. So if I head back into the automation and go to this step, set the client equal to the project client, this lookup field, and then we can set the status field here. But here's the problem. Because when this runs, that project client field is coming from the trigger. But the problem that's happening is that when it's triggered, it's not actually associated with that project. Because if you remember, we actually did the association of the project in this step. So we actually don't need this step at all because it's not going to fire. In fact, it's going to be this empty value that's not going to work. So I did this just to show you because you can experiment with this on your own, but it's not going to actually update with what we want, which is the reason that we have to actually build a second automation for this. 
So we can go ahead and delete this field. Uh, you only need to update the task if there's something else you want to do, like add a value or something else that's going to come from other places in your data there. But the other thing we want to be able to do is to create a new automation where we're saying we're going to set the client on the task level. We're going to trigger this off of when a record matches a condition, and we're going to go on the task app, as you might expect. Now, our condition is going to be where that client, that guest access, essentially, if it's not matching up with that project client, because then we want to add the project client to it. So that project client is going to come from the trigger here. You can see we've got that project client, which again is the lookup field. We've also added another lookup field for the project manager, which is the owner, in this case, like me behind the scenes, because we want to be able to update that as well. And then this is a really simple automation where we're going to use this action to update the record. We're going to update the same task that was the trigger in the first place to say now our client is equal to the project client. Remember, this is coming from that project level. So our client guest access is equal to the guest access project client from the project level. And our owner is equal to the project manager or assignee on the project level. I know that's a lot of information, but I think for some of you who are doing a lot of powerful things with automations, this will hopefully provide a little bit more clarity behind how we can set up those forms and create the automations to link this all together. But of course, if you have questions about your unique situation and your setup with SmartSuite, feel free to reach out to our website, automationhelpers.com for a free 30-minute consultation.